Good morning, everyone, Silvershire here, and welcome back to Palace Swap, where I rank the costumes and character designs of your favorite fighting games. And by your favorite fighting games, I mean my favorite fighting games, and by my favorite fighting games, I mean Soul Calibur. Today, we're looking at the Edgelord Reaper wishes he could be Nightmare. But before we begin our analysis, here's a quick refresher course on who Nightmare is and what we should be looking for in his character designs. Nightmare was once a young knight by the name of Siegfried. If you want to learn more about him, check out episode 1 of this series. But long story short, he was corrupted by the false promises of the cursed sword, Soul Edge, and was thus transformed into the Azure Knight. To quench the sword's unending thirst for human souls, Nightmare amassed an army and set forth on a dark crusade, cutting down all who stood in his way and drowning the world in blood and darkness. Ooh! Ow! I think I cut myself on all that edge. Though Siegfried eventually broke free from Soul Edge's control, the nightmare was far from over. With the help of an evil sorcerer, Soul Edge's spirit possessed the Azure Knight's discarded armor and brought it to life. Though just as dangerous as ever, this form was unstable, so it sought out a new host, which it found in the Holy Roman nobleman Graf Dumas. This new nightmare preferred trickery and subtlety to the straightforward aggression of his predecessor, but make no mistake, he was just as deadly. The first game in the series, Soul Edge, has a secret unlockable costume for Siegfried showing what would happen if he were to be corrupted by Soul Edge, making it a sort of prototype nightmare. It really leans into the body horror aspect of Malfestation. It's hard to tell where mutated flesh ends and blood red armor begins. In this way, I think the limited 90s era graphics actually help the costume out. But despite the scariness, the fact that this is an early design shows. It lacks the strong silhouette, unique color scheme, and distinct personality of future iterations. He seems like a shambling monster, not an intelligent threat. Also, his face looks kind of goofy up close. It reminds me of a capybara, not super scary. It's not bad for a rough draft, but I can't give this higher than a 4 out of 10. I'm glad he got reworked into the Azure Knight. Our first official Nightmare design from Soul Calibur 1 establishes the core traits that will be carried over into all his future One Piece. Dark blue armor, glowing red eyes, and of course, a mutated right arm. These elements combine to make one of the strongest and most iconic character designs in all of fighting games. However, I think this incarnation is kind of lacking. The armor is very dark and desaturated, to the point that it usually just looks grey instead of blue, and there are no accent colors to break it up aside from a little bit of brown on his waist. This does give him a stark, imposing appearance, similar to Sauron or the Witch King, but it's just not as unique and memorable as his later designs. 7 out of 10. His 2P, as will become tradition, highlights his wild side. He's bare-chested, which gives him a barbaric vibe and showcases the extent to which Soul Edge has taken over his body. This costume fixes one of the problems I have with his 1P by adding a splash of color in the form of a red plume, which keeps his pellet interesting despite being mostly brown. My only problem with this design is the helmet. I just don't like the shape of it. I think it's supposed to look like a dragon or something, but it just looks like a weird egg. I think it would be better if it was a little less elongated and used some sharper angles. 6 out of 10. Quick side note, this has nothing to do with the rankings, but did you ever notice that he's doing a creepy grin in this render? I'm the Joker, baby! Have fun trying to unsee that. Nightmare's Soul Calibur 2 1P is easily his most iconic look, so much so that it's even used as Project Soul's logo. His armor is much brighter blue this time around, and it now features gold accents as well as a long red plume. It's really eye-catching, and combined with his unique silhouette, it makes him instantly recognizable even at a glance. Something I really like about this design is that it's not all monstrous. His armor is graceful and ornate. If it weren't for his red eyes and his mutated arm, he could easily pass as a heroic knight, which is fitting for the chivalrous dignity with which Nightmare still carries himself prior to Soul Calibur 3. If you came here for a hot take, I'm sorry to disappoint, because this is a 10 out of 10. His 2P is an interesting one, because it's the only Nightmare costume not to include a helmet. Unless, of course, you count his 3P from this game, but I consider that a Siegfried costume, which is why I covered it in the last episode instead of this one. I really like the decision to show his face, because it blurs the line between Siegfried and Nightmare. It shows that the Azure Knight isn't just a persona that he can shed along with his armor. This is also indicated by his mutated arm, which is a lot more grotesque than it was in his previous 2P. In Soul Calibur 1, his arm was attached to his body via claws that made it seem more like a parasite, whereas here, the gradual blending of colors and the dark veins shooting across his torso make it clear that his actual flesh is being transformed. Yet, like in his 1P, his armor is ornate and pristine, a reminder of the grace from which he has fallen. I'm not a fan of the weird diaper thing he has going on over his pants, it's a remnant of an older design, and it'd be nice if his hair was a little more disheveled, but those are nitpicks. 8 out of 10. His Soul Calibur 3 1P is largely a callback to his Soul Calibur 1 1P, although it applies the lessons learned about his color scheme from Soul Calibur 2. 
Gone is his plume, but he still has a splash of red in the form of his Kingula Militare, which is Latin for dangly belt things. His entire color palette is a little darker this time around, and his armor takes on a bit more of a purple hue, both of which make him seem eviler, more evil than he was before, which is perfect since he's no longer Siegfried. But the real star of this design is his arm. As well as spreading further across his chest than it ever did before, it's covered in some big old nasty chompers. I think the teeth are a really great inclusion not only because they're scary, but also because they complement Soul Edge's eye, making what seems like an entire functioning organism. I feel like there's some wasted potential here, though, because the design does nothing to indicate that Nightmare is an empty suit of armor now. They played it safe when they had the opportunity to go really wild. Still, 8 out of 10. His 2P is also reminiscent of Soul Calibur 1, but I think it's way more effective this time around, largely due to shape language. Triangles and sharp angles in general are associated with action and danger, and this design is nothing but triangles. He's covered in spikes and teeth and blades, and even the parts of his costume that are plain metal use a lot of hard edges, much like Siegfried's Soul Calibur 1 2P. His helmet is also very alien looking, which ups the intimidation factor. This costume totally missed the briefing that Nightmare is an empty suit of armor now, but I'm more willing to forgive it since it's a 2P. 9 out of 10. My feelings towards Nightmare Soul Calibur 4 1P are the same as my feelings towards Siegfried's. Is it over the top and ridiculous? Yes, but Soul Calibur 4 was over the top and ridiculous. This game was the climactic final showdown between Siegfried and Nightmare, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Unlike his Soul Calibur 3 designs, this really takes advantage of the fact that there is not a dude in there anymore. Most obviously, it replaces his midsection with a sarlacc chomping on the plasma globe, but it also includes some inhuman body proportions and these strange bird-like feet. Additionally, it introduces some fiery orange accents to contrast Siegfried's icy blue armor. My favorite thing about this costume is the cloud of dark energy that trails behind his head, mimicking his old plume. His arm is kind of wimpy, which I wasn't big on at first, but it makes sense because Nightmare is supposed to be slowly deteriorating without a host. So, perhaps controversially, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. His 2P is reminiscent of Night Terror, as he's wearing organic, bone-like armor. I like it on its own, but I don't think it works that well with the body they've given Nightmare in this costume. Since he's grey and red, but the armor is yellowish, we don't really get the sense that it's part of him. This isn't helped by how loosely it all connects to his body, it's just kind of magically floating there. A lot of this is due to the fact that two P's in this game had to double as creation parts, so they couldn't do anything too crazy with them. If he was more monochromatic, and if it looked like the armor was actually attached to him, it could have tapped into the grotesqueness of his Soul Calibur 2 2 P or his prototype Soul Edge design. But as is, it's like a 4 out of 10. His Soul Calibur 5 1 P takes heavy inspiration from his Soul Calibur 2 1 P, which is fitting since he wants more as a human host, but it also incorporates a bit of his Soul Calibur 4 1 P by giving him an orange horn on his helmet and talons on his boots. The armor is a lot more complicated than it was in Soul Calibur 2 now being broken up into several smaller segments and using more triangular shape language. It looks cool, but it's trying to fix what isn't broken. This costume took a sleek, elegant design and made it a lot busier for no real reason. The face in particular kind of has Michael Bay Transformer Syndrome. That's not to say it's all bad, because it does do some neat visual storytelling. His mask is very similar in shape to Patroclus' shield, which symbolizes the connection between Patroclus and Graf Dumas, and there are bat-like designs in the armor that hint at Graf Dumas' true identity is that of the vampire Raphael Sorel, but sometimes less is more, 8 out of 10. His 2P is said to be inspired by the Grim Reaper, which is a cool direction to take the character. This costume is effective for many of the same reasons that his Soul Calibur 3 2P is, and it combines his mutated arm with metal armor in a way that we haven't really seen before. I think that giving him a tattered cape or something would have made the costume more dynamic and cohesive, 7 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6 is a reboot of the series, and once again, his costume is a callback to Soul Calibur 1 that uses his more modern color palette. The red this time around is neither plume nor belt, now being found on his mutated arm and by extension part of his breastplate. This costume's main distinguishing feature is its cape, which gives him a grand, larger-than-life presence that works super well for his character. A detail I really like about this design is that the greaves, pants, tacit, and part of the gauntlet are all identical to Siegfried's, because admit it, they are the same. 8 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6 doesn't have any alternate costumes, but it does have alternate colors. His color 2 gives him Siegfried-esque silver armor and changes his red accents to blue. This is unlike anything he's worn in the past, and it's a really cool option to have. 9 out of 10. His color 3 is red, referencing his prototype design from Soul Edge. I love the color red, so this is an easy 9 out of 10 in my book. And lastly, his color 4 is purple, which is fine. I don't really have any strong feelings about it, so I'll give it the same score as his default color. 8 out of 10. 
and with that, we have ranked every single Nightmare costume. Overall, I think Nightmare is one of the best character designs in all of gaming, but that's just my opinion, so what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with any of my rankings. Also, let me know which character you'd like to see next. Episode 3 will be about Yoshimitsu, as requested by Beats. I hope I pronounced that right. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I bid thee farewell.